Between Normandy and Brittany, and a faraway place in time, there lived a lord of awesome renown. He possessed a castle near the sea that was so strong, so fortified, and so well defended that he feared no king or prince, duke or count. He was rich and of great stature and handsome bearing. Despite his distinguished noble lineage, however, he was vain, cruel, treacherous, and proud, fearing neither God nor man. He spread terror about the land, ambushing and killing pilgrims and merchants on the roads and byways. He observed no fasting or abstinence, attended no mass, and heard no sermons. No one had ever known another person as wicked as he. One good Friday, having awakened in a jovial mood, he summoned his cooks, shouting, Prepare the game I hunted yesterday, for today I want my dinner early. Upon hearing this, one of his knights exclaimed, My lord, today is Good Friday. Everyone is fasting and abstaining, and lo, thou wishest to eat meat. Believe what we say, God will eventually punish thee. By the time that happens, I shall have assaulted and hanged many people, replied the Lord scornfully. Art thou so certain that God will continue tolerating this much longer? inquired the knight. Thou shouldest hastily repent, beg for pardon, and weep for thy sins. A man of great sanctity, a hermit priest, dwells deep in the neighboring woods. Let us go there for confession. The Lord reacted sharply. I go to confession? Then swearing, he remarked, I would go there only if he had something I could despoil him of. His vassal responded patiently, saying, Accompany us at least. Smiling ironically, the Lord protested, I acquiesce for your sakes, but I will do nothing for God. And so they took to the road. Arriving at the hermit's retreat in the heart of the quiet and solitary forest, the knights entered the abode of the holy man, but their Lord remained outside on his horse. After confessing their sins as sincerely and diligently as they could, the knights pleaded with the hermit, Father, our Lord, who remained outside, is not in a good state of soul. Please entreat him to come in for confession. Leaning on his staff, the hermit went out to meet the Lord, addressing him with calm dignity. He said, Welcome, sire. Being a knight, thou must surely be courteous. Accept my invitation, then. Dismount, and let us go inside to speak. With a churlish oath rising to his lips, the Lord answered impatiently, Speak with thee? For what? Speak about what? We have nothing in common. Besides, I am in haste and wish to take my leave. Undismayed, the hermit insisted, For the sake of the order of chivalry, please come in to visit my chapel and my abode. Overcome by the hermit's insistence, and especially by the forcefulness of his personality, the Lord grumbled to himself, What the misery I fell into agreeing to come hither this morning. Very much against his pleasure, he conceded, hoping he would somehow succeed in quickly ridding himself of this bothersome hermit, the Lord dismounted. The hermit took him by the arm and led him into the chapel. When they were before the altar, the man of God said to him, Sir, consider thyself my prisoner. Kill me if thou wishest, but I shall not freely let thee go from hence before thou hast told me all thy sins. 